Okay guys, welcome to another video. This one will be about uh, basically driveline angles, pinion angles, transfer case angles, and vibrations that can be caused. Uh, these are the vibrations that <clears throat> you'll experience you know, on or off the throttle. Generally they happen uh, accelerating or uh, if, they're, if they're slight they'll happen only around highway speeds. Um, or decelerating, like I said, they can happen at, at basically any time. Um, it all depends on, on your setup, how high it's lifted. Uh, it, you know, if we're talking a Jeep or a truck. Um, yeah, and, and your axle setup, your suspension setup. But there's a few basic things that you can usually trace it back to, and that's what we'll cover here. So some causes for some driveline vibrations. Uh, you can have improper operating angles, which I'll get to, uh, which would be like your pinion and your transfer case angles, uh, where the drive shaft goes in. Uh, you could have completely shot or just starting to go out uh, U-joints. Uh, you could have loose or worn mounts, which would be like uh, your transfer case mount or even if you've got some suspension links that are loose on the axle. Uh, this can cause some play as well. You can have bad bearings in the driveline system, and what I mean by that is somewhere along the route, like a pinion bearing can cause it in the differential, uh, a bad transfer case output bearing could cause it, uh, things of that nature. And last but not least, you could also have an out of balance drive shaft. Uh, each drive shaft should have weights on it or should be balanced at some point in its life, and with four-wheeling especially you can hit these on rocks and the weights can fall off and then you might get a vibe or you could have a bent drive shaft from hitting it. Uh, there's some other things here that that may not be listed but these seem to be the most common ones. This diagram here illustrates your pinion angle and what exactly uh, that is. This is another one of my great drawings of a rear axle you can see your tire here uh, you know a, a rear end this would be your axle tube uh, your diff cover right here drive shaft and your yoke and your pinion angle is going to be measured uh, typically it's going to be measured with uh, just a you know you can get a 10 or 15 dollar angle uh, a tool to measure the angle I know a craftsman sells one, uh, you know, through Sears, and you basically hold it up flush with this yoke here, and that'll tell you the the amount of degrees that it's tilted. Now you may or may not be able to do it with the drive shaft installed. Uh, you might need to unbolt it, uh, which which doesn't take a lot of effort. It's you know typically four bolts, uh, five sixteenths head that you can just pull off and then measure that angle. And you want this at ride height on level ground. Uh, so you can get the most accurate results. That's going to be your pinion angle. And then <clears throat> you're also going to have your uh, the operating angle at the transfer case, which will be, you know, essentially where this drive shaft meets up with the transfer case. And same thing there, if you pull the drive shaft off, measure at that yoke, uh, that's going to give you the angle that it's coming off your T case. Now, one thing that's often overlooked is uh, not just the, the pinion angles, uh, but also their relation with each other. And what I mean by that is if your pinion angle uh, is, you know, if your drive shaft is sitting at, at, say, 15 degrees down and your pinion angle is 15 degrees, meaning that the U-joint here is essentially doing no work, uh, it's the purpose of the U joint is to absorb, you know, absorb the uh, the curve and the rotation of the drive shaft where it meets the axle. And if this is straight in line here, and then up at your transfer case, you've got a severe angle. You're going to want to fix that. And what you're looking for is you're looking for them to essentially be uh, equal to each other, so the U joint is spread out or the the angle is spread out between the two different U-joints. 
and so this one's going to absorb a couple degrees of it and this one will absorb a couple degrees instead of this one having six degrees downward and this one operating straight so once you measure them both and you measure the drive shaft angle just by putting that measuring device whatever you may have uh, just on there you know that's where you look into ways to correct it and in something with leaf spring setups this can be done by uh, putting shims on shims underneath the uh, leaf spring packs and then rebolting them down which can you know you can move your pinion up or down or if you're going to look at the transfer case side that's where the transfer case drop comes into play and the transfer case drop is essentially going to drop down the transfer case uh, you know to to correct the angle a certain amount depending on the drop and your lift height and, and the current situation you're in. Okay, here is a basic diagram uh, trying to illustrate what I was talking about before. Uh, this is just a conceptual, uh, not conceptual drawing, but this is only just so you can understand the concepts behind it. Uh, this is not a real world measurements or anything like that. Uh, let's say this is the frame of the vehicle. This is your transfer case and here are your front and rear axles with tires. And let's say you have <clears throat> your angles measured to be 30 degrees. Now say this is too steep and we want to bring this down because uh, vibrations are occurring because the drive shafts are too steep and the u-joints can't operate at this particular angle in this vehicle so what we can do here is we can say <coughs> let's install a t-case drop and what you would do here is you would put this in between the cross member that supports the transfer case and the frame and that's going to lower the transfer case by that amount such as in and these right here, this is for a ZJ, which would be a 93 to 98 Grand Cherokee. Uh, this is a one inch drop, and these came off of my previous Jeep. Um, that will lower down the T-case one inch. And like I said before, these aren't real measurements, but uh, to put into perspective, this would lower this, and in turn, adjust the angles and reduce your operating angle. Now ideally you would want your drive shafts to be at the least angle possible which is why if you do something like a slip yoke eliminator kit or a hack and tap style kit you're gonna want as long of a drive shaft as you possibly can get just because of the fact that you can reduce your angle that way and try and get rid of your vibrations versus something like a Wrangler has a very uh, a very very short drive shaft and that's why they tend to have a lot more problems with the vibrations even at smaller lift heights than something like a Grand Cherokee does. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any other questions.